inviting me on this forum to discuss on about electricity distribution sector in India and how we are, what are the challenges and what kind of solutions we can have. Uh, because in most of the forums, uh, normally we discuss about uh, generation, transmission and power sector, but the electricity distribution area, we feel that it's a somewhat neglected area. And uh, thank you to uh, provide me this opportunity to discuss about those challenges which electricity distribution uh, sector is facing. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I am uh, Rajkiran Bilolikar. I work in uh, Administrative Staff College of India as Associate Professor. From last six years, I am working there. Prior to that, I was in Mumbai, uh, in Maharashtra State Electricity Board. Uh, after that, Maharashtra State Electricity Board of seven years, I went to Ministry of Power. Uh, then I came back uh, and resigned from State Electricity Board, tried in few consultancy firms, and finally settled in Administrative Staff College of India. Currently, I am one of the members appointed by Government of Andhra Pradesh to look into energy conservation aspects in the state. Uh, and we are working with several governments on power sector, power sector aspects, and power sector policy. Uh, we are advising uh, many say, state governments on uh, these aspects to improve uh, wherever possible. So today, I am going to discuss about electricity distribution challenges. Uh, since 1991, I am hearing the same uh, thing that uh, oh, reforms are there, and uh, we have to do these things, and we have we are going to take care of all these things. And many, many uh, times we said that these kind of steps we have to take, loss reduction and financial aspects of the electricity distribution sector, how to reduce the losses, losses, or everything. And after 10 years of our reforms also, which has been started in 2002, 2003, the same situation is there. We have, we have the bailout package in 2001, and in 2011 again, is the most worse situation than in 2001. So where we are? Did we really, did we really do those things? Did we really take those steps to improve the entire segment? Where are we? Let us see. So we started in amendmenting, amending the 1991 Electricity Supply Act, which opened the sector to private participation. At that time, commercial performance of the state utilities was very critical, with the losses of rupees 25,000 crores, and it was 1.5% of the GDP in 2001-2002. And that was being thought that it was very dangerous to the entire economy of the country, and the ACV debt to central public power suppliers was rupees 40,000 crores. And that's why the government of India announced bailout package in 2001 and suggested many reforms activities, including Electricity Act 2003. That was the preset of Indian Electricity Regulatory Act and Electricity Act 2003. In next 10 years, they have taken various steps. Mega power policy came. 1998 Electricity Regulatory Act. Commission Act, an amendment to Electricity Supply Act came. In 2003, Electricity Act came. In 2001, before that, Energy Conservation Act also came. Many people, even not aware about Energy Conservation Act is there. And energy conservation and energy efficiency is the most intrinsic part of the entire improvement of the efficiency of the distribution sector. People are stick to Electricity Act 2003 and they normally ignore the Energy Conservation Act 2001. Is there, all the policy measures, measures have been there. Then National Electricity Policy suggests what are the steps to be taken to support, to implement mandatory EC Act 2003, how we have to design the tariffs, how to reduce the cross subsidies in next 10 years, next 15 years, what will be the role of electricity regulatory commissions to improve the entire situation. And then in 2010, 2008, other policies came to support all these activities. But, and with all these activities, I'm not saying that, I'm not actually negative, but with all these activities, we have very impressive achievements. Let us see, let us start with our impressive achievements and then we will see what were the problems. So these impressive achievements, in 1991, 70,000 megawatt was the capacity, now it is 274 gigawatt of the capacity. 
So it provided the competition, it provided, it opened the sector, private sector, people came to the power sector, they invested heavily, and we reached 274 gigawatt, and people are, since morning people are saying that there is 40,000 megawatt standard capacity is there. Maybe the situation is different, but it is some kind of surplus kind of situation. So we are at the stage of 274 gigawatt with this policy support, with these activities. Renewable energy, 18 megawatt in 1991, now it is reached 35,776 megawatt in June 2015 of CEA report. So that's the capacity we added with this particular support, with these kind of activities. It recognized trading as a license activity. The entire sector got matured with power exchange, with power uh, purchase activities through exchange. Opening entry into generation, mul permitting multiple distribution licenses. Mumbai is the best example of distribution licenses, and then it is permitting more distribution licenses. Private, gener private people are also coming. Separating transmission from dispatch, trading, and generation. Transmission is totally separated from dispatch. But many states, many states are not actually adhering to these kind of things. Taking an example of Andhra Pradesh only, and even Gujarat, they have separate transmission company, they have separate distribution companies, but they are actually running the entire transmission and distribution power purchase through their own one power purchase company, the power purchase committee, which is actually directing transmission, government generation sector, as well as distribution sector. So as today morning we were discussing about the uh, government, less government intervention, we should not actually, regulatory commission should be different, but where is this? With all the provisions, governments are not acting in that way. They are not giving that kind of independence and power purchase is again actually happening with one power purchase committee which is actually dealing with transmission, distribution and generation. So that's what competition is created. Environment is being provided. But we are not actually utilizing that particular environment in a such a way to create that kind of independent uh, uh, sector. Promoting open access is there. We know the story of open access in the country. Energy uh, Electricity Act led to an active power market I already discussed. The shift from feed-in tariff to reverse auction in solar, 17.8 megawatt in 2001. Just within 15 years, it reached 3,743 megawatt. Andhra Pradesh, Telangana quoted 5.12 rupees with this reverse auction. We discussed today that how they are reaching with the international funding, international uh, uh, financing they are bringing in and they are reaching 5.12. So that's the way we are providing support to the investors and creating the environment. Rajiv Gandhi Gramin Vidyutikaran Yojana, which is now Pandit Dindayal uh, Yojana, access to electricity rose from 59% of the population in 2000 to 74% in 2010. So obviously there are lacunas in RGVY, there are lacunas, but still we have achieved this. Promising models of electricity distribution, there might be many arguments of Vivendi distribution franchisee or Agra distribution franchisee, Kanpur distribution franchisee model. But still, we are experimenting with these innovative electricity distribution models and moving towards the improvised version of electricity distribution sector where we can actually think about the separation of carriage and content. So that's what we are here. But did we really achieve our goals? With all these kind of activities, what happened? Power sector after tax, Losses, excluding state government support to the sector, were rupees 61,800 crores in 2011, equivalent to nearly 70% of India's gross fiscal deficit and around 0.7% of GDP. Just imagine where this money is going. It is actually not creating our jobs, infrastructure, and everything. Lending organizations, which are Indian lending organizations, have been paralyzed because of they are putting money into the power sector, which alternate actually opportunity of that particular funding can be can happen in different in, in the entire economy, in different sectors, but it is not happening. If subsidies are included as revenue, losses fall by more than half, still 29,500 crores losses are there. Aggregating Profits and losses over time, accumulated losses, 
are 1,14,600 crores in 2011, which Dr. Pramod Dev, sir, told today morning that might be in 2015, it is more than 3 lakhs crores. And that's the alarming situation of the entire country. Are we really going to the economic slowdown in the next five years because of power sector only? Those kind of questions are arising because of this situation and how we are going to tackle it. We are concentrating on generation, we are concentrating on transmission, but the problem is with distribution. We are not getting money from distribution utilities. How much of money we are putting in, in distribution, uh, generation and transmission, but we are not putting that kind of efforts to improve the distribution sector. The question is whether it is mindset of the people, whether it is mindset of the organization employees, whether it is the technological advancement which will, which will improve the electricity distribution sector, or whether it is the regulatory or policy framework to improve the entire electricity distribution sector. I think everywhere we fail. This is my opinion. This is just my opinion, but everywhere, in each and every aspect, we fail. In, when we are talking about, when we talk about electricity distribution. So discoms and bundled utilities are the largest contributors to accumulated losses with a share of 86%. So this is the time, this is the urgent need where we have to really think about electricity distribution. Just 10 years after being bailed out, the sector is looking for another rescue from the center. It is four times larger than before. And what are those losses? I actually, I will come to the slide this. What are those losses? Sector-wide accumulated losses are this, by 2000 were for bundled. Distribution utilities are like, it's actually steep losses are in distribution sector only. And in few states, like Uttar Pradesh, it is reaching 25% of that sto total state GDP. In Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh, the situation is very good. In Gujarat, it might be 1% or 2% of the GDP, but in few states, the losses are 25% of that state GDP. How those states are going to work? That's the problem. This poorest performers, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, and Tamil Nadu and Jharkhand, the poorest performers, which their, their losses are more than 20% of their state GDP. And the best performers are Kerala, Goa, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal, and Gujarat. West Bengal and Gujarat, uh, they, in 2005, they were abysmal, but then again, they picked up, and then they improved the situation, and then now they are performing. And Gujarat posted very uh, positive results uh, in last five to six years because of the leadership. So whether it is a leadership question, whether it is a policy question, today we were discussing about the political interference in the entire working of the regulators as well as electricity distribution. Generation and transmission, according to my opinion, that political interference is not there because it is not directly related to consumers as well as the citizens of India. But whereas distribution segment directly deals with the citizens and then political interest and political interference will come. So how we can actually reduce this political interference and improve our regulatory framework, that we have to really think about in next uh, decade or next immediately for next five years. With these losses, the debt owned by power sector has grown to 3.5 trillion rupees in 2011, which is equivalent to 5% of GDP. And if that is 3.5 trillion, what all the banks currently in India, they are involved in this. The debt in distribution grew fastest over 2003 to, in that period, 2003 to 11, at a CAGR of 23% in real terms. It has expanded as a share of total debt from 9% in 2003 to 36% in 2011. The reasons, Dr. Pramod Devji mentioned today that they were actually taking working capital loan, short term loans. And Commercial banks were giving them loans with the just government guarantee, not really thinking about their performance or rating or performance link operations. So this, this results into this particular situation and I mentioned that many discoms have recently relied on short term loans to meet operating expenses and it leads into drastic situation. So debt owned by state utilities, Uttar Pradesh 43%, Haryana 10%, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan 18%, these are the culprit states where 
really they have taken the working capital requirement and didn't increase the tariff at all. Didn't increase the tariff at all. Now, with the RBI guidelines, these commercial banks are not releasing these loans to these particular utilities and now the tariff shock is coming on the consumer. <coughs> so what happened in last? How we can tackle this situation? Funded loans to power sector by banks, Andhra Bank actually increased 13 major banks as a share of net worth is more than net their net worth they lent it. Andhra Bank, Canara Bank and United Bank of India, more, it's almost United Bank of India is okay, but uh, more than their net worth they lend it to the power sector it's only. The situation of these banking systems is going to be really, really uh, dangerous and critical. What are the drivers? Why it happened? Drivers everywhere in all the states it's, there is a huge gap in average cost and average revenue with subsidy and average revenue without subsidy. So, it's gap without subsidy is there and gap with subsidy is there. And in many states, in many states, whatever the subsidy is claimed by state government, partial subsidy is being paid to the utilities, not fully. That is also one of the reasons. Few states like Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, they got 98% of the subsidy paid by the government. But many states, it's a situation that government is not even paying whatever the subsidy they promised to the electricity utility. Creating the electricity utility financial situation more worse. So, these are the states. Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, in stochastic frontier analysis model we have mentioned this with World Bank. Uh, I, I was one of the part of this uh, study. So less efficient is Punjab, Chhattisgarh, Kerala, Bihar, Jharkhand, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh and Assam. How they did that? In Andhra Pradesh and Raj, tariffs are not set at cost recovery, but states achieve profits with subsidies. They did that. They managed in that way and they, they achieved this. In Assam, Bihar, Haryana, Punjab, Tamil Nadu and Tripura, tariffs are not set at cost recovery and states make losses with subsidies. Goa, Himachal Pradesh, Manipur, Mizoram and Nagaland, tariffs are not set at cost recovery and states make losses without subsidies. It's a situation. Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand and all these states, tariffs are set at cost recovery, but states do not achieve profits even with subsidies. Maharashtra is also included. So that's why they, they have several operational inefficiencies, several collection inefficiencies, revenue in, the model inefficiencies that has to overcome. Tariffs are set at cost recovery and state achieves profits with subsidies in Gujarat. That's the only state which performed and Delhi, Kerala and West Bengal performed very nicely. Tariffs are set at cost recovery and states achieve profits without subsidies. Gujarat achieved profit with subsidies and these states achieved profits without subsidies. So we have to learn the models, methodologies by Kerala, Delhi, West Bengal and actually apply those models to all these states. Time has come to really think about all these things. So, pro Maharashtra. Maharashtra is tariffs are set at cost recovery, but states do not achieve profits even with subsidies. So, operational inefficiencies are more in Maharashtra, uh, and that's how they couldn't achieve the profits. Maharashtra has to think about operational inefficiencies, uh, losses, agriculture consumption. What is happening uh, in few states uh, like Andhra Pradesh, whatever the subsidy is been, uh, agriculture uh, uh, tariff is not there. So agriculture tariff has been totally uh, subsidized and provided by the government of uh, those particular states. But in Maharashtra, it is uh, flat based tariff. And in flat based tariff, the calculation of uh, uh, whatever the units consumed by the state electricity utility, there is a huge gap because they are trying to put it into agriculture uh, consumption uh, and it varies. Actually, they are trying to put in a way that 1318 hours uh, in a year for one pump for five hours supply for three zones and less than 1318 hours per year for 
फाइव अवर्स पावर सप्लाय इन रेस्ट ऑफ द महाराष्ट्र थ्री जोन्स आर नासिक जलगाव नासिक जोन पुणे जोन एंड अदर वन जोन वेअर वॉटर इज देअर बट द प्रॉब्लेम इज वी हॅव स्टडीड दिस विथ द अमरावती युनिव्हर्सिटी हाऊ इट इज हॅपनिंग द प्रॉब्लेम इज वॉट इज ॲक्च्युली द कॉन्ट्रॅक्ट डिमांड फॉर दीज पर्टिक्युलर मोटर्स इज समवेअर अराउंड थ्री एच पी लेस दॅन थ्री एच पी ऑर फाईव एच पी but many crops are there which require more water than the specified 1318 hours with 5 hours water supply uh, power supply so they can't pump that particular water to save their crop so what is happening at field they increase their pump capacity from 5 hp to even you can find 15 hp motor also 15 hp pump also that is been not accounted in the entire calculation so somebody has to really put actually these kind of efforts to understand what is happening at ground level in agriculture consumption and then they have to make those policies accordingly then i think some kind of situation may be improved but this act the entire calculation is been faulty because of these kind of things this is one example there are several examples also there's no bandwidth altogether yeah there is a bandwidth there's no bandwidth to collect the money yeah no yes yes <laughs> so this is so what we can do then uh, actually we th- if we think about the last slide uh, the reform areas of ea uh, introduction of competition we achieved enhance accountability and transparency that's the major question we don't have accountability and transparency in the entire sector particularly in distribution data is not there even with regula- regulatory commissions from last 10 years they are collecting the data but if you ask 2001 data they have tariff orders but the entire data sheets are missing so at least at regulatory commissions there was an effort to uh, form regulatory information management system which can be very useful for calculations for benchmarking for even checking and monitoring and verification also but that is not happening regulatory information management system is absolutely not there every year electricity distribution utilities are submitting that particular data which can be digitalized and make use of the entire that data so obviously that can be used for accountability and transparency but that is not happening as of now reliability indices particularly for standard of performance which we talk for the accountability that is absolutely missing in each and every state why it is missing those questions we need to answer everybody knows those questions and answers also but nobody wants to really work towards that if my transformer is not fixing up in rural area for 3 months also nobody knows about that we are not deliberately creating that kind of awareness amongst consumers rural consumers that if i won't shift as a electricity employee if i won't change the transformer within these particular specified period the entire consumer uh, lot of that uh, particular transformer will get money back according to my sop my officer also won't know it at many times and my consumers they don't know about it so that kind of awareness is not there electricity act gives the support to each consumer as well as utility but we have not created that kind of awareness in last 10 years so where will be the question of the improvement comes we are talking on all big things but at these ground levels we are not really discussing so i am thankful to this uh, uh, gyan prabho uh, urja prabodhan kendra to create this uh, uh, kind of awareness amongst the students so that people can really aware about these things and it's a interesting area it's a fantastic area where we have to work each and every citizen have to work to improve the efficiency i normally talk about climate change and uh, energy conservation resource conservation also we are at the doorstep of climate change the 2 degree centigrade increase in the temperature of earth atmosphere is going to create havoc if we don't improve in our efficiency at this level at this stage we are not going to create a very better future for our next generations or our kids within next 100 years the entire arctic is going to melt just imagine if the entire arctic is going to melt and we are doing all these things 40% of the losses in our own electricity distribution 
78% of the thermal generation power is there in India and we are wasting 40% of that in losses. We are not getting money back. And we are talking about climate change, we are talking about carbon dioxide emission reduction, we are talking about all those things. That's where every citizen has to think. Access to electricity and rural electrification is there. Nobody is talking about decentralized distributed generation. There is a policy on re decentralized distributed generation. The efforts are not being taken care. Only people are talking about remote villages, but there are so many villages which are 74, 74% of the villages are being electrified, but only 5 hours or 6 hours electricity power supply is there. Why are you not talking about decentralized distributed generation to give them 24 into 7 power supply? We are not talking about that. Improved customer service and affordability of supply? Customer service, reliable power is an issue everywhere. When we talk about industrial associations, they, they, they are actually, they are the people who are suffering with because of the unreliable power supply. Not like residential consumers, sometimes they suffer, but industrial uh, consumers, they are suffering. Voltage regulation is not at all there. You are not maintaining your entire uh, uh, electricity lines properly so that they, you can really satisfy your consumers. I am not blaming only electricity utilities. Consumers are all. I am, I am blaming the entire system. Electricity utility officers are working very nicely. I, am, I, am, I, I, I was employee of electricity, employee, uh, electricity board. But that awareness has to be created. That capacity building has to be created. That support has to be there. Promotion of renewable energy it is there. So what kind of solutions we can find? Align stakeholder incentives. Stakeholder incentives, even lenders also, like banks, you align their incentive with your entire power sector incentive. You mention that, that whatever the rating system, then and then only, based on their performance and rating system, you lend it to electricity utilities. Strengthen regulatory governance and processes. We are talking since morning about uh, uh, strengthening the regulatory uh, uh, governance. Few solutions are being talked about because there is government influence on regulators. So why can't we create regional regulators? For two or three states, one regulator can be formed. And then the minimum government influence can happen on that. So these kind of innovative models we can put in and then improve the entire situation. Implement key regulatory mandates like SOP I mentioned. You, you implement it properly. Improve corporate governance and state utilities. According to the Department of Public Enterprise guidelines, there should be minimum number of executive directors and independent directors should be appointed in electricity boards. In our electricity utilities, independent directors are appointed. But who are those independent directors? They are ex-chairmen of state electricity. No, most of the times these things are happening. So how you are going to improve the situation? So we have to really follow those guidelines and then improve the uh, electricity utility. Promote responsible rending to the sector. Ensure availability of high quality updated data I mentioned. Reinvigorate planning and coordination mechanism. Planning and coordination mechanism is very important uh, with state load dispatch center, central, CEA, as well as our renewable energy integration. Decentralized distributed generation and different models of distribution is required. So I think we are, we are actually working, but we have to really work hard to improve the situation. Otherwise, because of power sector, because of power <laughs> sector losses, we may face the economic slowdown in the country. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for patient listening. If you have any questions, you can ask me. So these are my coordinates. Uh, you can write it to me. If you have questions, you can come to me at any point of time. Thank you.